You know I love the Lord of Hosts, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hello, I am the Ronin Pawn. I'll be reading. In the past month, the crypto markets have seen some dives. The first, as the media informs me, had three causes. Reason one, a billionaire found out that his pledge to sell cars to people in Bitcoin was really, really dumb. I'm sorry. <clears throat> really, really dumb. And now maybe he won't sell six-digit vehicles made out of glue stick AA batteries to affluent, self-indulgent hipsters in a currency that would cost everyone involved an extra four digits per transaction to close because you're using Bitcoin wrong! Also that he's a balloon-faced idiot who doesn't care how many people have to die so long as he gets to reenact the events of the 1990 film Total Recall live on location. Reason 2. The Chinese government, a body politic that demands to have no less than ten fingers snugly lodged within every orifice of its citizenry at all times, is, for some reason, cracking down on these globally decentralized, internationally democratized, societally owned and operated, transactionally transparent currencies. Gorsh, who would have thunk the Chinese Fed wouldn't love crypto? Reason three. The U.S. Treasury thinks maybe it might someday possibly start considering proposing a resolution to perhaps investigate establishing a committee to review the concept of creating a fiat version of a USD cryptocurrency, one that's linked to the value of the U.S. dollar, which is not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Can you imagine if crypto had some kind of one-to-one -one analog currency representing all the big fiat dollars of the world? It, it could be sort of tether to the paper currency's value at all times. That, that is a good idea. We should do that. So to recap, according to the financial technologies press, Bitcoin and crypto tanked because rich people are uninformed, overvalued, self-obsessed, guilt-averse leeches on global society, only ever pretending to know what they're talking about. Dictatorially Orwellian governments don't like the people having power for some reason. And the U.S., as always, is starting to kick around the idea of inventing something that already exists. Now, the only reason I can see to sell here at a loss and flee from the crypto markets in lieu of this news is if people sold at a loss and fled from the crypto markets as if any of this qualified as news. But, 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 hey, yesterday another big plummet befell us all in the crypto world, and woe be unto him who had open shorts who stepped out for a smoke. Also, you know, zip it up, will you? The neighbors can see it dangling. But why the intense and unexpected correction? Hang on, let me, let me Google what the newspapers say happened here. What happened here? It's a new keyboard, you like it? Mom got it for me. It's a little bright, I'd turn it down. Ah, here we are. Reason number one, uh, the FBI arrested some people. Those people had money in a crypto wallet. Yeah, no, that, that's it. Seriously. No, no, the feds didn't hack a BTC wallet. They, they caught some internet scammers whose laundered funds were stored in Bitcoin on a computer. Full stop. Sentence over. End of line. I know, right? Reason two for the fall yesterday. Hey, remember when Elon Musk said that thing he said? No, he didn't say anything new, but remember that thing he said before? When he said it? The, the, the... The, the thing he said, you, you, you remember, like, like a month ago when he, and then reason three, day 29, the Chinese government, still not a fan of crypto, world soils self in shock. Reason four. Oh my God, you guys, do you like even remember when Elon Musk said that thing that time? No. So I say again, the one reason I see to sell here is that other people, dumb people who trade in the same markets I do, apparently, are of the ilk who choose to sell here. And I don't want to be accidentally photographed in the same room they're in. Might I suggest, and try to follow me on this one because it's way out there and the, the fintech press hasn't seemed to pick up on this insider tip yet. Might I suggest that when a stock, commodity, currency, or any other thing of value in any marketplace, sex tuples in value in the course of just 180 days. <laughs> there might be some kind of market correction ahead. <laughs> I, I'm crazy, I know. Bear with me as I flesh this one out for you.
Whether you, I, like it or not, I don't, the value of everything everywhere comes down to what the people who are buying and or selling think the thing is worth in the moment they are buying and or selling said thing. And that is all. There is no implicit value to anything at all. <coughs> Sucks, don't it? Rash speculation and fevered, I assume often methamphetamine-fueled trades, built Bitcoin a great big bubble. In six months, the BTC doubled in value, then doubled the double, then doubled half of the double double, and on the double, put it all on the double. And with that many doubles, you're gonna get bubbles. That's just what double bubbles do. I hate the bubble, not the double, baby. So BTC's double bubble burst as expected, right? Right, right? As, ex as we all saw coming when the, when the Bitcoin, when it was up to 60,000 in six, we, that was expected, like we knew that that was coming at some point, right? And now, sadly, your beloved Bitcoin is worth merely triple what it was six months ago. Which is but half a double of one double bubbles double. Damn. A moment of silence, please. Let us all bow our heads and mourn for this massively upward trending imaginary coin we have imbued with value, as is our wont. Uh, just one of which is worth more than all of the cars parked in my driveway right now. Oh, the sadness. What I'm getting to is that maybe, just maybe, those seven days mid-May when BTC fell so hard didn't happen because a rich idiot revealed how dumb he is on Twitter, or because a socially oppressive governmental regime confirmed that they'd prefer to be in control of everything everyone does all the time. <laughs> oh, really? <clears throat> or even that some numbnuts in Washington is maybe starting to consider drawing up some new designs of something that came to him in a dream the other night. It's kind of a, a three-dimensional circle that, when, when placed atop a hill, rolls down it. Maybe, instead of those infinitely stupid things. What if BTC came up at an average rate of nearly $300 per day, and then it leveled off for a while, and then the people who spend their whole day thinking about what other people might be thinking about, traders, traders started getting nervous that the other traders might be starting to get nervous about the possibility of them getting nervous. And then everybody started to panic sell. And what if all that just happened to happen while a rich wannabe Martian ran his mouth in two countries formally announced what everyone already knew about them. Plausible? But hang on, if that's true, what about yesterday? Yesterday, BTC took another big drop, a big drop, that barely registers if you stop pressing your nose to the screen and zoom the line graph out a bit, doofus. But no, you're right, it did drop. So what about that? What about that, Mr. Smarty Man? Where's your double, double bubbles now? They're Dublin, baby. Well, it's a wild conspiracy theory I've got, but hear me out on this. What if yesterday's drop had a bit more to do with the upset stomachs and shaky knees of all of us who can still remember what it felt like way back when the BTC bubble burst? You remember that? I mean, I know it's been all of uh, two and a half weeks I've personally already labeled and scrapbooked the pictures that I took of the kids back then. I can't believe I wore my hair like that. <laughs> what if a second smaller descent is, I don't know, a natural, expected, and virtually guaranteed event in any market that experiences a bubble burst? You know, like, what if human beings who recently got kicked in the nuts were more prone to cup their balls when somebody drops a heavy object in the other room? Little jumpy, little jumpy. But with good reason, like, what I'm saying is what if people are people? No, no, not, not lizard people, the regular kind. If you're a financial technologies journalist and you've been publishing the past two weeks or 12 years, <clears throat> maybe look into the concepts of causation and correlation. I think you'll find it a good read. Heck, maybe follow it up with a brief dictionary visit to the word journalist, because I'm pretty sure it isn't what you think it is. By which I mean, it isn't casually insinuating that maybe the FBI cracked through one-way SHA-256 hashing last night. Which, as a journalist, is something you could implicitly know. Because, you know, if that were what happened, you, you wouldn't be writing a, an article for your little rag about how crypto tanked a little bit. You'd be writing an article titled, Sudden Collapse of Global Internet and Computing Security as We Know It. 
Sometimes things are complicated. Sometimes they're not. This is one of the not scenarios. The sooner you stop trying to figure out what half-wit celebrity, ransomware scam, or morally bankrupt government triggered the great downfall of BTC, the sooner you'll start to notice the striking absence of a downfall of BTC, great or otherwise. And while I admit all that FBI stuff does make for good clickbait, uh, you know, we've all got a trade out here, so don't trade on the clickbait. Okay, thanks. Now shut up and smoke this.